Hiya, my name's Rich Wilson, and today I brought you to Aston Park Fisheries. This complex is owned by a very good friend of mine, Alex Mitchell. Fish with him all my life, lifelong friends. This is a venue I incorporate into my spring and summer match fishing. I've got a match coming up here in a couple of weeks. So I've got a little session today just to sort my elastics out, make sure they're set right, make sure I'm fishing in the right depths of water for the fish, make sure I'm on the right baits. Today, I've come on Bill's Lake. Plenty of carp in here, what we're targeting. Maybe one to three pound, hopefully quite a few bites. The fishery itself is a mixture of snake lakes, normal lakes, pleasure lakes, it's got everything, full shop, full complex, cafe, facilities, absolutely wonderful. So today I'm just here, just to have a recce, get myself prepped for a match, and hopefully when I come to match situation, everything's ready, my elastics, my line, my hooks, my shotting, my bait, my presentation, I'll just go straight into fishing a match, which will make it more productive, hopefully produce more fish, more efficiency, and we'll see how we go. Bait-wise for today, I've chatted with lads in shop. They know the venue way better than me. They're here every day. Quiz them, have a little chat, find out what they're catching on. And they've told me, fish feeding on maggots. So I brought a couple of pints of maggots. Everything likes maggots. We're coming into spring now and fish are starting to feed. We can feed some more bait. It's 12, 13 degrees today. It's, it's a pleasant day. So I've got my maggots. I've also got some two milli soaked up fishery pellets to fish four milli expander over top and if I need to pick some better fish out or we feel there's too many small fish in peg and expander isn't working right I've got a bit of corn I won't introduce a lot of corn but it's there for the hook I'll fish it over my micros I'll just work my way into my session it'll tell me what they want to feed on what they don't and we'll just take it from there This lake builds, it's like any traditional snake lake. Shallower in edge, a deeper trough in middle, shallower back up far bank. The two shallower sides of the lake warm up a lot quicker. And your little carp, your F1s, your bigger carp, they love to hide under far bank and they also like to come into the shorter, shallower water where it warms up in the edge. We'll be predominantly doing our fishing there today. In middle of winter, you're gonna fish in the trough, but I think fish are going to be moving out of there now and we're going to catch them a lot better further across and closer in. Starting with my rigs today, I've got two elastics set up. I've got the zip 8 to 10 and I've got the zip 10 to 12. The 8 to 10 is what I will fish really tight over because I want a super soft elastic when I strike, allow the fish to swim out of the peg, not disturb the shallow water, not disturb the other fish, come down my shelf and I can play it. I've got the 10 to 12 set up which I'll fish away from the far bank and in the deeper water and maybe down the edge because it's a bit deeper. It allows me to control the fish a bit quicker. I don't need, I'm less spooking the fish with the deeper water. And them two elastics I feel will suit everything I'm doing today. I don't need to go lighter or heavier. Coming down to my line, I want something that's really robust, strong, allows me to catch loads of fish. I'm not gonna tangle, I'm not things so I've gone for a 0.15 reflow, reflow power line down to a 0.11 reflow power line Preston bottom. Hook wise, I've got a 16 and 18 Guru F1 pellet. It's a fine wire hook, but we're still in spring. It's, it allows me to catch the bigger fish, but also gives me the finesse and the presentation to just slip a little pellet on, a couple of maggots, a maggot, thread a maggot, whatever I've got to do. It might sound like I'm fishing with light line, but coupled with the right elastic set at the right tension, I feel I can land anything today. There's nothing in here that's gonna break me line, run me ragged, just concentrate on catching some fish, super happy, super confident in my line and my rigs. Floats wise today, I've set up a new fish ace in a four by tens and a new fish still in four by tens. It's not very deep, 
So the 4 by 10s will cover most fishing I've done. I'll do. I've got some 412 set up if the wind gets up or we've got to present the bait a bit harder on bottom. But I feel 410s is going to be ample today. Shotting wise, I've got a little strung bulk of number 10s in the bottom 8 to 10 inch, maybe 12 inch of line. Just allows me to present it nice and fine. Watch my bait fall through that last bottom few inch of water. I'll be able to see if fish are moving, if fish are feeding, and we'll see how we go. Feeding wise today, I'm going to kickstart my peg by feeding a few maggots, a generous amount of maggots, maybe this many, on my line that's two metres off my far bank. I'm not going to feed any other bait anywhere else. I'm just going to kick off on that line, pop them in, one pot, go over it, see how it goes, see if there's any fish there feeding. When I go further across, I will be probably kinder potting, but by not putting any bait in over there, the fish won't be preoccupied. I'll be able to see if they want that bit of dumper bait, see if they want to feed over it, and I can progress from there. If that doesn't work, I'll realise they probably want it trickling in, and when I go further across or move lines, I'll change, I'll put a little kinder pot on, and I'll trickle two or three maggots in and go over it, see how we go from there. Had a great start to the session today and I found the best way to catch these fish in this little bit deeper water down this shelf by putting half a dozen micros, well probably a dozen micros, about 30 or 40 maggots and cupping them in dead tight over my spot and then following it straight in with my rig, single or double maggot And just, I feel them, that bulk of bait going down sends my fish t to the bottom and concentrates them in a little area where I can just lower my rig in and hopefully get a bite quite quick. Sometimes I get a bite straight away or a sign. Sometimes fish could come in and mop it up and you just repeat it again. If I don't get any indications in a minute, so, two minutes maybe, sometimes 30 seconds, I'll have another go at potting some in. Straight away, a fish there, look. So I've just gave it a dollop of bait. Well, not a dollop, but a dollop for this time of year. 30, 40 maggots gone in there, but any fish that were mid-water or cruising, instead of using a little kinder pot and dripping it in, gives them a chance to eat it on its way down. It just sends them to the bottom. It swam out of my peg now. I'm just letting elastic do its work. This time of year, any better fish or bonus fish? You need to take your time. You need everything to count. Just, there's no rush. Simple, steady. Just, just that way, very lightly up, just inside that mouth. That one was single maggot, I'm not going to change, I'm just going to have another single maggot. Just clear a bit of snot off my line. So my rig's ready to go in. Pick my pot up. Dozen micros. 20 or 30 maggots. Maybe a few more than that, just bang bang over where I'm going to lower it in they'll all go down any fish that I might have spooked hopefully see that bait going down don't have a chance to take it on drop or stay mid water that'll just about be getting to the bottom that bait now banging with my rig just lowering it in imitating how them Maggots and pellets went down. If I were tapping them in with a little kinder pot, 
be making a lot more noise and there's a chance the fish should be different depths in water. It would result in a lot more line bites, especially in that depth of water. When I go further across, I will definitely use a kinder pot because there isn't the depth of water to bring them up or make them go a bit daft. But while I'm in this sort of depth, I feel putting one hit of bait in just allows that bait to get to the bottom and you fish where you need to be fishing. There's no instant sign there, so I'm just going to lift my rig back up half depth. Just lower it down like the maggots did when they dropped. And one could just follow it straight to the bottom and take it. If not, it just looks natural, and if there's one there, I just take it. We've been fishing this session now a couple of hours. We've been fishing in the deeper water, two and a half, three foot, um, metre and a half off our bank. It's just last few, last 20 minutes, it's become a little bit iffy. So we're going to start chasing them a little bit further over now. We've, we've got a rig plumbed up that's six to eight inch off far bank. We've now put a little pot on. And instead of, just because it's shallow, we're going to trickle a tiny little bait, bit of bait in. When we were fishing shorter, um, we, we were putting quite a bit of bait in with a pot and that were working a lot better, maggots were best, but it's just gone weirdly if so it's just time to start searching your peg, having a look what we can catch where, see if them fish are wanting to hug that far bank and go into that shallow water. There's nothing saying that that's where they want to be, but it could just, the peg could have just gone iffy. trickling a few tiny little pellets in and just see how it goes at one bit we were catching really well short feeding following it straight in catching a fish repeating but as day goes on fish move feeding patterns change over the far side the water warms up a lot quicker so a few little changes in temperature can just push them fish further across and feeding this line a lot different to for when we we're fishing in deeper water I'm fishing pellet on up now and I'm just trickling in just two millimicros not not a lot just enough to catch a fish it's not it's not going to be mad over there I just want to catch a fish at a time by just trickling a little bit of bait in we ideally get a bite, quicker bite. I'm going to alternate two lines over here. We've been so shallow and time of year, I don't feel I could flog one line, so I've got, and it'll be 11 and one, each side of my peg where there's a nice little, little hole. I'm just going to alternate each time I go out, fish one side, then fish other. The, the two areas across where I've chose to fish, I had a little plum around, some at banks a little bit caved in and it's a bit horrible. I've picked two lines that are lovely and a little flat area. It's as if fish want have been there before. They, it looks like they're happy to sit there. Little foot by foot flat area. It's where it just looks nice. D a decent enough depth to catch 18 inch. Whether it'll be too, too shallow at this time of year. We'll see, but there's, there's definitely fish be moving over there as we've fished today. It may be a case of the line off the far bank. It might just need a resting or you know, moving. It, it might have gone iffy because we out we fished it too long. We just have a keep having a little shove in each hole. Go on as other line now. Ideally, we want to drop in and get a bite quite quick as if there's a fish just waiting there to take it. It's 
ease his way in, find out how they want it feeding. Whether you want to feed one line and then fish the other, or feed and then fish straight over it. Some of the fish we've caught are quite decent stamp. It's, you don't need a lot to build a big weight on here. Couple of signs there, we're just lifting up. We're not really striking. We don't want to be pulling pellet off. Just lift up, if there's one there, it'll hook itself against elastic. There we have one. I'd like to strike into that, just lift it up. It's up to it, it's swam away. Elastic were nice, nice and soft. Just swam into the middle. Totally out of where we've fished now, so it can do what it wants. Get it back on top kit. Little carp. Chunky little thing, they're good weight builders. We've caught that, there was zero disturbance over there, so we're just going to put another pellet on. We'll tap a few pellets on that side where we've just caught that fish and then fish the other side. I'm not putting a lot of a lot of pellets in, there's probably literally 30, 40 pellets in. My feed pot. So I'm gonna go out. I'll be able to split this feed just by I'm a bit gusty. So let's line that up where I caught that. Couple of tap puts a few in there. Then I'm gonna just swing it round when that wind stops. I'm going to go straight in without tapping the rest of my pellets out yet. Just in case from my last feed there's one way in to take it straight away. And it gives me option to then feed again. So I've only emptied half of my pellets out of my pot. So I had a sign then straight away. Straight back down. There's a fish there from the last time I fed. So I don't want to get any more bait to eat yet. Try and catch it. Another sign. Lift up, drop back down. I have got my float super dotted down, so I am really lifting up at anything today. I'm just going to feed the rest of them pellets now, just to see if them fish home straight in on them pellets. Drop mine straight over top. Probably only 15 pellets gone in. Wind's a bit gusty today, I've had to have two number eights, back shot, just to stop my wig, rig swirling around. There's definitely signs of fish over there. Whether they're really properly having a feed, I don't know. You could just have to repeat this, swapping from line to line quite a bit until it gets settled or you, you realise which side they want to feed at or how they want the feed. Because we fed that bait on this side as we shipped out, at any point I can just switch flip to that side, switch, and there could be one just sat there waiting to take it. Just keep that little bit. More time you can build the confidence up on a line. Hopefully quick you should get a bite. There were definitely a couple of signs there, but whether it were, were feeding, so I'm just gonna switch back to where I fed. Let's start. Now there's 10 or 15 pellets gone in there. Let's lower his rig in. If it, this doesn't re result in a fish, we'll just come back. We'll probably put a few more pellets in pot and then we can start again, feed one side and fish other. The session today has gone. We started in the deeper water and it were brilliant. We were catching fish. We worked out how they wanted it. They wanted 20, 30, 40 maggots potted in. Follow it straight in with single or double maggot and we were getting signs and bites. As the days progressed, that line's gone a bit iffy. So we've opened lines up really tight across. And today, there were fish to be caught there, but today that wasn't right. The fish we have caught were better, but there weren't as many signs, weren't as many bites. Maybe we should have tried to make that deeper water line work, move, maybe open another line in the deeper water.
But that's what we were here today to do, find out what lines were working, what baits were working. I've come down the edge later on, fed a bit of bait, I've caught four or five fish. There were some fish there, whether we could have made that work better, whether we could have fed two lines down there. But that's what we were here today, spring day. It's been an hardish session, but we've caught some fish, we've worked out exactly what needs doing. So when I'm in a match situation, it's like this, I know exactly lines to use, elastics to use, floats, bait, distances and depths. It's exactly what we come to do today.